Ever wondered how to give your images that striking halftone look? Today, I'll share a super simple method to create this effect in Photoshop using multiple halftone patterns. The best part? You can apply it to any image instantly with just a quick drag and drop. Stick around until the end because I'm also giving away some of my premium design bundles, absolutely for free. All right, let's jump into Photoshop and get started. First, open up one of these images in Photoshop. You can download all these assets from the video description below. Now we're going to create a halftone pattern. Just add a layer of neutral gray by creating a solid color and set its brightness to 50%. Then right click that layer and select Convert to Smart Object. This ensures we can apply filters non-destructively. Now reset your color swatches, then head over to the filter gallery. If you forget to reset the swatches, your pattern will use whatever colors are currently set. Inside the sketch group, choose the halftone pattern filter. Increase the size to around eight or nine, push the contrast all the way to 50 and set the pattern type to dot. Now your gray layer will be transformed into a perfect halftone pattern. To blend it with your image, simply change its blending mode to color burn. But since we're going for a black and white halftone effect, let's desaturate our image by adding a black and white layer from here. Then create a threshold layer above it and set its value to one. Finally, apply a Gaussian blur to the halftone layer from here. Increase the blur radius until the dots blend smoothly with our object image below. But why does blurring matter? You might wonder why the pattern only blends well after blurring. To explain that, Let's zoom in on our blurry pattern and take a single dot in a larger scale. So here we have one blurry dot and one solid dot for comparison, both placed on a black to white gradient layer. And by changing the dots blending mode to color burn and adding a threshold layer at level one, then move our layer in both directions. Watch how the blurry dot shrinks over lighter areas and expands over darker ones. And the solid dot never changes size. That's why blurring is key to making the halftone pattern integrate smoothly with your image, resulting in bigger dots in dark areas and smaller dots in bright areas. Now let's get back to our document and add another layer. Let's add a levels adjustment layer above our image. Levels will simply let you control the intensity or let's say distribution of the halftone effect in all areas. Tweaking the highlights, shadows, and midtone sliders will dramatically change how and where the pattern appears. You can even use this black slider to brighten the dark areas, revealing white dots in spots that were solid black, and use this white slider to darken the bright areas, creating black dots in places that were solid white. This gives you complete control over your halftone effect distribution. If you want extra flexibility, using patterns is the way to go. Since our halftone pattern is just a layer, we don't have much control over its size or rotation. That's why we should use patterns. I've created a seamless halftone pattern pack with over 50 blurry halftone textures. Grab your free version from the link in the description below. After downloading your free version, import it into Photoshop from here. Next, select the first pattern and click OK. Then delete the old halftone layer and change the blending mode of the new pattern layer to color burn. Now, after replacing our layer with a pattern, you can double click the pattern layer and adjust its scale from here. And also change the pattern rotation from here. This would give you an extra layer of customization. Let's adjust the levels a bit and move on to the next step. And here is our final dotted halftone effect. But there is a quick tip I want to share with you. If you zoom in, you might see fine details like hair mixing oddly with the pattern like that. This can be simply fixed by applying some blur to our object layer. After converting your layer to a smart object, head up to the Gaussian blur filter from here. A small blur amount on the object layer will clean it up nicely. As you can see, the more you blur, the rounder the dots become, but don't go too far, as too much blur will wipe away your image details like that. So a blur of two to four pixels usually do a good job for most images. Let's try out some other patterns. But first, let's save our current result into a new layer. This can be done by selecting the top layer and pressing Alt plus Control plus Shift plus E. That way, we can experiment with other patterns without losing this version. 
Now let's start by trying this line pattern. Or let's grab this circle pattern, scale it up a bit and shift it like that. Also, let's try out this wavy line pattern. Adjust its placement as you like. And this way you can get multiple halftone effects with multiple shapes. Now let's use levels to refine this version as we want. Just use the white slider to show the pattern in the white spots, as I explained before, and use the black slider to show the pattern in the black spots. Now let's manipulate the contrast a bit by using shadows and highlight sliders. This to make lines very thick in dark areas and very thin in bright areas. This gives each line an impression of fluidity. And here is the final effect. Now let's find out how to reapply the effect with a click. Let's open up a new image from here. But let me first separate the statue from its background, and I will explain why very soon. After making a selection around the statue using Object Selection Tool, press Ctrl plus J to take it to a new layer. Now let's get back to our previous document, select all workflow layers, and drag them into the new document. And here we go! The image is instantly converted to a line halftone effect like that. But let's move the statue layer to the top. Then select my workflow layers and duplicate them by holding the Alt key and dragging them at the top like that. Now press Alt plus Control plus G to clip mask all layers to the statue layer below. And the best part here is you can simply pick a different pattern for the statue alone. I'll choose the second pattern and adjust its position like that. And then adjust the levels. I'll tweak the sliders until I get a better result. Finally, let's add a slight blur to the background to help fix these tiny details around trees and buildings. So I will select the main layer and apply Gaussian Blur from here. Set Blur Radius to 4 pixels and click OK. Now select the top layer and press Alt plus Control plus Shift plus E to merge everything into a new layer. This way we can see our final result without any pixelations. To level up your design even more, let's add a few textures to it. I've created a grunge texture bundle of over 50 grunge textures. You can grab your free version from the video description below. Just pick the 39 texture and scale it up by holding the Alt and Shift keys together. Shift it slightly to the left, then press Enter. Now let's choose a suitable blending mode from here. I usually go with screen, but for this texture, using difference or exclusion can give you a better result. So I will pick exclusion. Let's bring in another texture. This time I'll import this 46 texture. For this one, I found that Color Dodge is doing a great job, but it's a bit harsh, so I will decrease the layer's opacity to 50%. And here is our final mixed halftone effect with textures. And that's how you can reapply the halftone effect on new images, combine multiple patterns together, and use textures effectively. Now let's have one final example and level it up with gradient maps. I made this 3D text and split it into three main layers, front layer, 3D depth layer, and shadow layer. I used a wavy lines pattern for the shadow layer, and a wavy dots pattern for the depth layer, and a dots pattern for the front layer. Now let's hold the control key and click on the front layer thumbnail to make a selection. Once the selection is ready, select the top layer and add a gradient map above it like that. You can download these free Duotone gradient maps from the video description below. Or just join us on Patreon to get the full premium bundle. A bundle of more than 200 gradients to level up your designs and create amazing effects. Let's pick this yellow gradient map and let's make another selection around the 3D depth. Then subtract the front layer from our selection by holding Alt and Control together and clicking on it. Once the 3D depth only is selected, add a gradient map to it from here. Pick another good looking gradient map. And that's how you can colorize your halftone effect very easily. I forgot to mention that you can simply edit your gradient map from here. For the highlight slider, pick a bright color. And for the shadow slider, pick a darker color. Finally, you can add a few textures as mentioned before. And since we've covered that before, let's speed up this part. And here is the final result. That's it for today. Hope you liked the video and see you in the next one.